since we're also talking about uh, revisionist history and whatnot, and how embedded these reactions are, here's Eric Bowling. He's on Newsmax. We have a clip of um, Fox and Friends doing the same thing too. About, but the, you know, they all got the message. You, you can see it doesn't. We don't need to see every one of the right wingers who are going off on Big Bird promoting the uh, vaccine to uh, to kids. Let's be clear. There is no kid in America between the ages of 5 and 11 who is now eligible for the vaccination who's going to go and get this on his own or her own. They're, they're not going to get it on their own. Mm-hmm. They cannot get it on their own. And um, it is meant to, and there's no kid between the ages of 5 and 11 who are going to decide, distinct from their parents, that they want the vaccine. That also won't happen. This is not like, Mom, Dad, will you guys get me a Power Ranger for for, uh, Hanukkah this year? (laughs) It is meant to make the kids, A, feel less anxious about the idea of getting a shot, and B, to also feel less anxious about catching COVID because the dynamic that gets lost in all of this and and this is just as common if not more common than any reaction that i've seen amongst kids and granted you know the 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 kids i see are you know they're not their parents they're not talking about the vaccine being you know uh the devil's spawn but let's be clear 80 percent of the country has gotten vaccinated the overwhelming number of parents on polls and whatnot are in favor of the masking policies that they've seen from schools or are in favor of, of vaccine mandates. Overwhelming numbers. Most kids, not necessarily most kids, I haven't seen polling on this, and this is all anecdotal, but there's a lot of kids who are anxious about getting covid because they can't necessarily decipher the nuance. It's not hard to see kids, uh, at least in, in, in New York City, wearing their masks outside. Young kids. Because they're nervous about getting it. Because the idea that we had to go into lockdown because it was an unknown pathogen that was going around, that it happens once in every hundred years so far, that's a lot for a six, seven, eight-year-old kid nine-year-old kid to process the thing i'm excited about with you know the 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 vaccination for my son is as much about him relaxing like he is more much more um vigilant about wearing his mask and nervous about taking it off outside and i ask i'm like dude you can take it off outside And, and i see other kids the same way um i know that he will i've seen him put it down to but the part of that process is going to be giving them the security of you can't catch covid and you can't catch it and give it to your parents and then become an orphan which is also a dynamic that i think gets completely missed in this whole thing i, I also think that the republican and we'll talk about this when bowling talks there's two things here i think the immediate one is obviously they they want to push parents to, to at least a certain percentage of parents to not have their kids watch Sesame Street. And number two, NPR. Simultaneously, what's happening right now is they're going back to defunding NPR, defunding PBS, which they do every decade or so as some sort of cultural war. And this is the perfect opportunity to do so. Well, we're, we're, I have some insight into this, to the nature of this culture war. Here's Eric, Eric Bowling. Speaking of COVID, there was a ton of pushback to the Biden mandates over the weekend. Big Bird is now hawking the jab for five-year-olds on Sesame Street. And I've scheduled an appointment for my grandson. We're leaving in a few minutes. Now, I just need to get one last thing before we go to your appointment, Big Bird. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. And look what I have here is what we needed for your vaccine shot. Great on. Teddy Bear. Yes, it's time to go, Big Bird. Good luck, Big Bird. We're rooting for you. You're going to do great, Big Bird. We'll see you when you get back. I told you 15 years ago, Sesame Street are a bunch of communists, and they're proving it (laughs) once again. I stand by that assessment. 
Very right. brave. Put up that. Um, put up the uh, link to that uh, that uh, a Times article. Let's see what they were saying uh, forty years ago, fifty mm-hmm. years ago. About do you have it? Boom. It's up. There it is. Um, Mississippi agency votes for a TV ban on Sesame Street. Scroll through. Let's see why. Oh, it must be because they're. Uh, here it is. Okay. Um, now, a member of the commission said some of the members of the commission were very much opposed to showing the series because it uses a highly integrated cast of children. Uh, what does that mean, Sam? Well, I could, I mean, could be uh, vaccinated and unvaccinated. Yeah, exactly. uh, could be. Look, Sesame Street was originally developed <coughs> as an educational tool for inner city kids, mm-hmm. mainly black children. Um, who people, uh, you know, there were, there were people who were concerned that they weren't ha- having access to the same educational opportunities. So you got things like Sesame Street and Electric Company, which were uh, oriented towards m- more city kids, uh, and they were um, probably the most integrated uh, shows on television at that time. And turned out white suburban kids liked it too but not down in some areas because that was pretty integrated and you don't want to give the kids the wrong impression. Mm. Uh, and it just, that's how it evolves. That's how, that's how you can go from saying like, you know, Sesame street communist, I told you to now they're hawking the jab. And it, that's the, it's, that's the culture war folks. That's the way that it metamorphosizes. If Mr. Rogers were around today, he'd be doing very similar segments. And despite his own like Christian background, they'd be saying the same stuff. Oh, like, they of do that course. At the time. Oh, he was doing the Burton, of course. Yeah, I mean, he was right, exactly. So, um, it's they don't want their they don't want the children getting too soft, too commy, too loving. But That's- the problem is right now the opposition is too soft. I'm so and obviously, uh, you know, the media is, is is more concentrated and monopolized that, you know, Sesame Street has to go over to where's the HBO now. I'm concerned that like this might work this time around, even though I think probably percentage wise in terms of, of folks who really feel this way, it's it's smaller than it was in the 80s or in the, early, in the 70s. They have so much more power and we're so weak in terms of our, our, our gut instincts that we might lose some funding for these shows. I would I wouldn't doubt it. Look at voting rights. I mean, come on.